Oh, what's going on? What what's going on, guys? It's uh, it's been a while. Um, a lot of stuff has gone down, but instead of focusing on the negative, let's just go ahead and get into today's piece of CrossFit news. It's been a while since we've talked about news. There's some interesting stuff going on, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Do me a favor, and if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's just not waste any more time. All right, so today's piece is coming from uh, one of my favorite news sites, and that is the Morning Chalk Up. Morning Chalk Up, they always have some really cool, interesting articles in regards to stuff going on in the world of CrossFit. So make sure to go head over there, show those guys some love. Um, they also, some of the previous CrossFit news anchors or media people are actually, I believe, uh, providing content to them, specifically Tommy Marquez. So I think it's in our best bet or best interest, or I don't even know the right word, but go show them some love. They've got some pretty dope content that's coming out pretty regularly. If you had not already heard about this story, back in June, the city of Hermosa filed a public nuisance order against CrossFit Horsepower this is a gym out in Florida, and essentially said, your music is too loud, you guys gotta keep it down, people are finding it really, really annoying. Pretty much every single argument that every CrossFit gym has probably already heard. The city had voted against what they were going to do against this gym, and in a three to zero vote, they decided that uh, CrossFit Hermosa needed to update their gym standards, how they operated in order to meet the appeasement of the general public. And essentially they said they have 90 days to uh, renovate their gym so that their music would stop being so loud. People would not be using the outside area, sidewalks and things like that um, as far for exercising. And this is because they said that the general public found that this was extremely, extremely annoying. And so they said, hey, you guys need to shape, shape, ship, shape up. And you guys need to fix what's going on because people were just not having it. Um, and again, this is something that we've seen with a lot of different CrossFit gyms. A lot of people are complaining, or a lot of people have complained in the past about there's loud music, people are throwing weights around. It's probably the number one reason why people don't even sign up to go to a CrossFit gym is because they think it's ridiculously dangerous. Essentially what the city said is that no music can be heard outside of the business, no public streets or sidewalks can be used for a classroom as far as running. Athletes can't be using that area for any exercising. They cannot be open on Sundays. Windows and doors must be open at all hours of the day or operation. And free weights could only be used essentially on one side of the building. Free weights, specifically weightlifting equipment and things like that could only be used on the east side of the building and sound dampening equipment needed to be installed in order to prevent the loud noises from traveling outside of the building. And essentially what ended up happening was is the gym said, we're not having it, like we can't do that. This is how we operate. This is how the gym functions. Nothing for you. It's kind of embedded into what the gym does. So what ended up happening was the uh, CrossFit Horsepower owners decided to file a complaint and say that all of these complaints, all of these restrictions on the gym have actually been causing damages to the gym in terms of them having to close their business, lose money, just essentially go into debt essentially. Uh, because they can't operate the gym uh, uh, based off of the standards that they had originally set. Now, these fees increase even more because of the fact that these owners also have to go, they have to pay lawyers. I'm Saul Goodman, did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. Those lawyers have to go, they have to do research, just figure out how they can defend their clients' claims. These kind of fees start to add up. So it makes sense that the owners would file a complaint about this because it's not like the gym, as far as we know, is doing anything that's actually harming anybody outside of providing people with improved levels of fitness. We see this all the time. This happened previously with other gyms. Um, people are always complaining, even with the gym that I go to, I think there's been some complaints with the local businesses, some minor complaints here or there in terms of loud noises, vibrations, things of that nature. Uh, when you're owning and operating a CrossFit gym, it's really hard to mitigate these noises, mitigate these vibrations, mitigate these effects. Um, and I'm not sure if the gym is actually going to be able to win this case. I hope they do because it doesn't really make sense that people would be complaining about these things if this gym is located in an area that's a little bit more of an industrial setting, which I know that most other gyms are kind of tend to 
be in those types of areas. They're usually in like business parks, things of that nature. Sometimes they are in like more major metropolitan areas. Sometimes they're like underground or underneath buildings and things like that. But for the most part, most of these gyms try to be in places where they're not bothering anybody. They're not going to cause problems. I think there's actually zoning laws that prevent gyms from operating in certain areas. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see where this case goes. Now the city officials of Hermosa Beach have uh, stated that they will be fighting this um, complaint that the, the gym owners have uh, filed against. But I think this goes a little bit beyond that. I think there's this element and there's a stigma that people think CrossFit is dangerous and people think that CrossFit uh, owners and gyms are hurting people and injuring people. But if you look at the statistics, it actually shows that CrossFit has less injuries per capita than any other sport or most other sports. Like you think about football, basketball, uh, tennis, badminton, um, you look at all those other sports, there's all actually a lot more injuries uh, for athletes in those sports as opposed to CrossFit because the general population, um, the general population of CrossFitters aren't doing anything really that crazy. It's not like people are doing kettlebell one legged uh, pistol squats or they are doing uh, 30 pound wall ball burpees, things of that nature. This is an interesting case. I really hope that they're able to fight it. I don't think that the city is going to win in this instance and I don't think that they should win in this instance because it's not like these CrossFit gyms or this CrossFit gym in particular is actually doing anything to actually hurt the community. If anything, they're providing a service to the community. Now, maybe they could do things like lowering their volume, which um, I'm not sure if they have already made attempts at that. Hopefully they have made attempts to that. Now there is one caveat to the story and it sounds like that there's one particular city councilman in this sort of narrative that has been working with residents in the area as early as 2016 to coordinate um, the effect of getting this gym shut down. So it looks like somebody has some sort of like personal vendetta against this gym, um, but it's kind of similar to every other issue that CrossFit has had, especially with CrossFit Inc. and their fight against big soda companies and big soda companies as well as um, NASM and all these other fitness organizations kind of wanting CrossFit to shut down. And these fights against CrossFit seem to do anything but sort of raise the awareness for how important CrossFit is for the general population as well as how effective it is for the general population. And these other organizations are essentially losing because people are seeing the evidence in regards to CrossFit providing solutions to people for people. So I'm hoping in this instance that these individuals are able to fight against this city council ordinance attack on this CrossFit gym. Now, I don't know if this CrossFit gym has explicitly done anything wrong or negative in, in everything that they've done, but it looks like they are abiding by, you know, um, respective uh, ideals as far as you know working and coordinating with their the local other businesses and residents to not cause nuisance who knows what's going on but again uh, I hope that they're able to fight against this let me know what your guys' thoughts on this story are have you guys been in a situation like this if you're a gym owner or maybe your gym has been in this exact same issue what is it that you guys have done in order to fight against the city uh, because that's a pretty big thing I mean if the city's trying to shut your business down there's a good chance that they may shut your business down so was there anything that you guys did or your gym did in order to fight against the city in order to kind of create a win-win situation for everybody let me know down in the comments below because i would love to hear your guys's perspective on this story that's going to be it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed that hopefully you guys will comment down below sound off let me know what your thoughts are maybe we can come up with some loose solutions to provide these guys to kind of help them uh, bolster their fight against the the city of Hermosa Beach. I'll leave the link to the chalk up morning chalk up article down below. Uh, again, also subscribe to their uh, news channel because or their email newsletter because they have a lot of great content that comes out regularly in regards to news stories in the world of CrossFit. So guys, with that, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. This is David. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.